like to uh, invite our uh, last uh, presenta pre pre presenter, uh, Mr. Fatih Akdemir. Uh, Mr. Fatih Akdemir is a theologian and a correctional chaplain. He received his bachelor's degree in divinity from Konya Selçuk University, the city of Rumi in Turkey in 1999. Uh, during his university years, he gave lectures in several schools, religious centers, and radio stations in 2000. He came to United States to continue his academic career. He took many courses from Hartford Seminary and transferred to Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut, where he received his master's degree in religious studies. He has been working for the state of Connecticut Department of Correction as a Muslim chaplain since 2003. He is an active volunteer of the Turkish Cultural Center in Connecticut and an organizer of interface programs such as Abraham's Table, Please, I forgot to greet you. Let me tell three things first. Shalom Aleikum, Salam Aleikum, peace be upon you. Thank you so much. Islam versus terrorism. As you know, we have a uh, if we have a match or play or game, we have, let's say, two boxers, right? And we say, Michael versus Joseph, for example. So Islam is fighting with terrorism, and unfortunately, terrorism is the biggest enemy of Islam, unfortunately. What does Islam mean, briefly? Islam means submission, <coughs> surrender, and peace. So let me try to put it in just one sentence. Achieving peace through submission and surrender. Terrorism, as we all know, is the biggest crime against humanity. And terror comes from the Latin verb terrora, meaning to frighten. Common definition of terrorism refer only to those violent acts which are intended to create fear are perpetrated for a religious, political, or ideological goal, deliberately target or disregard the safety of civilians, and are committed by non-government agencies. Holy war, what does it mean? A religious war led with an exceptionally high grade of religious feeling, such as crusades or some other historical facts, but let me try to share what jihad means. Sometimes we confuse and mix it together. Holy war and jihad are totally different. Jihad, the Islamic word, means, literally means, to strive or to struggle. It comes from the root of jihad. jihad. For example, we say mujahid, mujahada, jihad. They all come from the same root. But jihad, in the broadest meaning, is striving through the way of God, struggling with both evil self, we call, actually call unfolded nefis, evil commanding self. So uh, it means struggling with both evil self and Satan, living and reflecting the essence of Islamic way of life. But one of the great Islamic Turkish scholars uh, described jihad as the effort made to remove obstacles that stand between humanity and God. That could be some enemy, that could be our beastly desires, that could be sins, anything. Jihad has four different dimensions or dimensions according to the Islamic uh, book of Islam. The defensive dimension, Jihad, Gaza, and heart. In Quran we see these terms 34 times, but only four refer directly to war, which is defensive war, defensive war. And let me tell you something original. In the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we have seen a lot of battles, a lot of wars. None of them, none of them were about attacking the enemy. All of them were defensive uh, wars or battles. Either 
the Mushrik tribes of Jahiliya or Quraysh or some other non-Muslims attacked or betrayed the agreement or between Muslims and non-Muslims or something happened outside of Muslim community and unfortunately they had to defend themselves, they had to do some battles. This is the defensive dimension of jihad. The second one is the psychological dimension, mujahada against the devil and beastly desires of nefis. The third one is intellectual dimension. It is actually ijtihad, it comes from the same root, which means the effort of a Muslim scholar to arrive at a decision using all his intellectual capabilities. And the fourth and the last one is the social dimension. <coughs> it means serving the entire community and preventing injustice. <coughs> there is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad. Hadith, by the way, by the way it means the sayings, the holy sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said that we, right after he returned to his uh, Medina, the new city, and they just completed one battle, uh, he said that we are returning from the lesser jihad, the smaller jihad, to the greater jihad, which he is meaning the uh, self-struggle with our evil commanding soul. So fighting or doing something uh, like war is not the real jihad, but the real jihad is fighting with hatred, fighting with ignorance, fighting with our evil commanding soul. Martyrdom, according to Islamic uh, sources, it's known in Arabic as shaheed. Shaheed means martyr. And it literally means witness. Some Muslim brothers and sisters must know that. We, we say the person, when he becomes Muslim, he is taking shahada, right? Taking shahada means to be an eyewitness of the truth of being that uh, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. So shaheed means witness. The main factor in being a martyr is witnessing the truth in all aspects of life. Martyrdom, or shahada in Arabic, is not only achieved by being killed by a non-Muslim soldier during a battle. Also, such an event does not guarantee martyrdom. And let me share this with you. A terrorist is not a martyr. Never. Never. Because martyrdom is a spiritual rank achieved only when the principles of Islamic religion are observed. You cannot just say, okay, I want to be martyr, I want to please my God. Let me uh, enter heaven and take this, so let me kill them. Never. You, you can never justify that. In order to be considered a real martyr, you have to defend yourself, you have to only, only attack the people who are attacking you. For example, a war of a rule of war, according to Islamic uh, sources, not here, but later it's going to come here. You cannot harm women. You may not touch children. You may not touch plants. You may not touch animals. You may not kill the religious people. And you may not kill the people who have no weapons or who have no intention to attack you. You may only, you may only fight those who are fighting you. This is the Islamic war rule. And martyrdom is a spiritual rank. Okay. It can never be reached by employing revenge. This is very important. Martyrdom can never be reached by employing revenge and hatred. The methods that a Muslim employs must be as righteous as his or her purpose. Okay, here there is a hadith of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah. He said that in the hereafter, a martyrdom, so called, this is very important, so called shaheed, so called martyr, will come to God. And God will make him know about his blessings.
the man will acknowledge them, then God will ask him, what did you do with them? He will say, oh my Lord, I fought in your way until I died as a shaheed, as a martyr. And God will remark, you are lying. You fought so that you may be called a brave soldier, brave warrior. Your intention was not my pleasure. So any terrorist is like him, unfortunately. Some people has a misunderstanding or misconception that if they kill the non-Muslims, if they kill the non-Muslims, then they will die as martyrs, they will enter paradise, and they will receive 70 or something with virgins. No, that's not right. A true Muslim cannot be a terrorist. Terrorism has no religion, no. A true follower of Islam cannot be a terrorist, and this is a wonderful statement, very clear, crystal clear, by Fethu Bakhtida. Very short. The main objectives of Islam are the protection of five things. Protection of faith, protection of life, protection of wealth, offspring, and mind. For example, if somebody is harming my faith or attacking or cursing my faith, then I have to defend it. If somebody is trying to take my life or the life of my beautiful wife or my wealth, my offspring, my mind, then I have my right to self-defense. So self-defense is uh, important in Islam, but not, not attacking the non-combatants. Okay. And this is the, one of the most famous verses from the Quran, chapter 5, ayat number, verse number 32. Whosoever kills an innocent human being, it shall be as if he has killed all mankind. And whosoever saves the life of one, it shall be as if he had saved the life of all mankind. Am I going to say something wrong if I tell this? According to this, and according to my understanding of this verse, the terrorist is the worst man, worst creature, and the doctors, right, who save lives, is the best man, maybe. If you take the life, you are committing the gravest sin. But if you save somebody, that's perfect. <coughs> Only this part. This is uh, from Quran, chapter 6, ayat, verse number 151 and 152. You shall not take life which God has made sacred, except by way of justice and law. Again here, nor take life which Allah has made sacred, except for just cause. And if anyone is slain wrongfully, we have given his inheritor authority, permission to demand kasas, retribution, or to forgive. This is very important, and the next verse is about it. Chapter 24, verse number 22. They should rather pardon and overlook. Would you not allow God to forgive you? God is ever forgiving and most merciful. Islam encourages the person who has lost his relative, forgive the killer. It's very important. God forbid, 9-11, uh, it was a very, very unfortunate attack. A lot of people passed away. And even I, as a Muslim, cried a lot. Only monsters must do it. No real humans can do such a bad action. Permission to fight is given to those, this is very important, please uh, read this with me those who are being attacked. So if the enemy, if the person, if the people, if the army is not attacking you, you don't do anything. You just have to, uh, you, you, you have your right to self-defense, but no harming, no attacking, unless they do. Okay, the worshippers of the all merciful are they who walk gently upon the earth, and when the ignorant address them, they reply, Salah, which means peace. 
Okay, and this is very significant. This is a uh, saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said that indeed, whoever intentionally kills himself, then certainly he will be punished in the fire of hell, wherein he shall dwell forever. Oh, it's scary, right? In true Islam, terror does not exist, again, by Fethullah Gülen. If Islam promotes terrorism, then why is Islam growing so fast and rapidly in the world right now? Please don't misunderstand me because I put it this here intentionally. I would like to say this. If Islam promotes terrorism, if Islam always encourages his follower, its followers to kill non-Muslims, then nobody in the world would think that, oh, Islam is okay. I would never become Muslim if I hear such kind of thing. So this is very significant. I just want you to please think about it. Okay, Islam rejects and condemns every form of terrorism. It does not provide any cover or justification for any act of violence, be it committed by an individual, a group, or a government. As a human community, we must be vigilant, very careful, and uh, very careful to oppose these shameless evils, which are not justified by any sane logic, nor by the religion of Islam. According to the FBI, as reported by the Council on Foreign Relations, 95% of the terrorist acts in the US are committed by non-Muslims. And this is very interesting. According to the Homeland Security, since 9-11, 2001, only 33 people have been killed in the terrorist attacks. But approximately 150,000 murders committed in the United States since then. The terrorists, whoever they are, could not be worthy Muslims. The Islamic message is a message of justice, peace, and mercy to all mankind, just like uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, preached perfectly. For example, uh, as my brother, as my friend Mehmet uh, introduced me, I'm a chaplain in Department of Correction. I have been doing this for almost eight years. And whenever I mention Jesus, peace be upon him, in my sermons, believe me, I always want to cry because I love Jesus, peace be upon him, so much. He was a perfect example for everyone. He was the role model of justice, tolerance, and unconditional love, exactly. But we have to believe that, as Muslims, of course, Muhammad, peace be upon him, preached the same thing which uh, Jesus preached. The basic truth is the same. Unconditional law. He said that, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whoever hurts a Jew or a Christian, he would be like hurting me. And he who hurts me hurts God. He said that. Suicide bombing of civilian targets is evil and prohibited under Islamic law clearly. I would tell suicide bombers intending to attack civilians that they would be murderers, not murderers, and that they would go to hell, not heaven. Suicide bombing of civilian targets is evil and prohibited by Islam. They cannot be considered martyrs of Islam because they harm and kill innocent people. They traumatize and create psychological injuries they cause damage and harm the, pro the properties of innocent civilians. They tarnish the image of Islam. They make their own families suffer, and they probably aid the success of an international crime organizations. Two more, they make the enemies of Islam happy. They become responsible for an unforgivable crime. Quran chapter 5, verse, verse number 8 says, Do not let the hatred of some people move you to commit injustice. Okay.
okay, a true Muslim can, by definition, never be a terrorist, we then have to distinguish between the misleading phrase Muslim terrorist or some, as some people mispronounce it, Muslim terrorist. And we have to maybe prefer this, criminal terrorist who calls himself a Muslim. He is not a Muslim terrorist. He is a criminal terrorist who calls himself a terrorist. Okay, let me skip this. Salvation could not be achieved through the killing of innocent people. Islam does not encourage any kind of terrorism. In fact, it denounces it. Those who use terrorism in the name of Islam, in fact, have no other faculty except ignorance and hatred. True and sincere Muslims cannot be terrorists because if they do something evil, even if it is as tiny as an atom, they will pay for that both here and in the in the after. <clears throat> Let me try to finish with one, two short, two short uh, examples. It reflects the intolerance. I mean, it's a start of one. May Allah forgive me. It reflects the interfaith acceptance, tolerance, and mercy of Prophet Muhammad towards the Christians and Jews. And after that, I'm going to ask you one short question, but don't answer, just listen. A Christian group from Najran during the life of Prophet Muhammad wanted to visit Muhammad, peace be upon him. According to our authentic historical uh, sources, they were 60, maybe 61 people. They came to Prophet Muhammad in Medina, asked him a lot of questions regarding the oneness of God, Jesus, <coughs> all other details. And then it was Sunday, so the Christian group wanted to offer their mass. They wanted to pray. And they asked, And they asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, where they can pray. <clears throat> and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, welcomed their request. And you know what he did? He requested his companions, his disciples, to empty the masjid, to set up the masjid. And he gave permission to the Christian group to pray, to offer their mass right in the middle of the masjid. And the Christian group was very surprised and they thanked Muhammad, peace be upon him, for his permission. And the Christians were able to <clears throat> pray in the middle of the masjid. Another thing, one, th one day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, <clears throat> was having chat with his disciples, his companions, excuse me, and all of a sudden, he just saw a Jewish funeral. <clears throat> a Jewish coffin was carried uh, upon the shoulders of four Jews. They were heading to the Jewish cemetery. As soon as Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has seen them, he stood up respectfully and showed his respect to the Jewish congregation. One of his friends asked, O oh, Messenger of God, why did you do that? They are Jews. Muhammad, peace be upon him, smiled and said, yes, but they are the servants of God. I have to respect them. So, I'm just going to ask you my short question then, inshallah, thank you. How can a follower of that person, Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is extremely respectful to the Christians, who is extremely respectful to the Jewish people and to everyone, how can his followers become terrorists? Do I look like a terrorist? <laughs> Thank you very much.